What is up guys? Welcome to the Fab Forms. Yet another episode of the Fab Forms. Today we're back on the Bibster. Gonna be working on some more panels. First thing I need to do though was get some flanges in the chassis for those panels. If you've seen the episode of the floors, I'm gonna do basically the same thing for the sheet metal that's gonna go around the trans tunnel. Had to put some flanges in there so I have something for those panels to attach to. So all I did is uh, put some more panel flanges on this thing, just stitched them together. I mean, it was uh, pretty straightforward on the back side. Got kind of a bevel on it, so this thing kind of goes up on this side, up on that side, and it allowed me to have like an arc in this, in this piece of sheet metal. Same thing down through the center. And then up front, you got the same little arc here, but what I did is I actually twisted these flanges, so as it goes up, they get more vertical. And what that's going to do is up here, it's going to allow me to have a big dome, whereas back here it's not. It'll be more flat. I already went ahead and kind of cut some mock-up panels. So you can kind of see that would be the uh, upper tunnel section. I just cut these out of that ram board and it works really good. It's stiff enough where I can uh, really feel it out to see how the aluminum's gonna act, but not so thick that it's hard to work with. It's hard to cut and whatnot, it's perfect. So anyway, I got that one, that's kind of what I'm looking at up front. And then I've made a centerpiece. So I think what I want to do is that front piece, I'll probably do it in one piece and then try to do the rest of it in a separate piece. That front piece will never come out. This back piece, um, I don't have any plans of it coming out, but it'll be nice if it is separate and I don't have to, you know, if I have to drill that thing out, I don't have to go up under the dash to get this piece out in order to get it all out. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to cut some sheet metal and uh, start shaping it a little bit, throw it in the bead roller, maybe put some beads in it and just see how close we can get this thing to fit in.
All right, so uh, let me take a second, kind of explain to you what it is I'm doing. I'm sure most of you are familiar with an English wheel. The way an English wheel works is it basically thins the metal. It stretches it, makes it thinner. Um, normally, it would stretch it both ways, length and width. So if you had something like this, and you're running it through here, it's gonna stretch it this way, and it's gonna stretch it that way. And that's how you get that dome effect. What I've done is I have a piece of rubber, like a big rubber band on here right now. And so what it does is it limits, it limits the stretching and it'll actually just curve it over this bottom die. So I've kind of picked a die that I felt like matched the radius that I'm looking for in the bibster. That's what I got on the bottom. Got a rubber band up top because I don't want this thing to turn into a bowl. I want it to stay long and straight, but I want it to have a little curve in it. I'm gonna curve it this way. So that's what the rubber band does. So I've just run this thing through a couple times. I got pretty close to the curve I want. Um, now what I gotta do is I gotta figure out how to bend this thing up right here. So it comes down from the back and then flattens out right there in the center of the trans tunnel. And so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm hoping I got enough curve in this where I can start stretching it right here with my stretcher and cause it to wanna kick up a little bit. I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to try it. All right, so I got it roughed in, uh, still pretty rough, got some lines on it. Probably gonna do some kind of bead rolling inside here, but until I do that, because it may move, it may stretch the panel just a little bit, make it a little wider, making it a little bit longer, may change the shape just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna wait. Because it's pretty rough, it still needs to be planished out and cleaned up before I do the bead rolling. So for now, uh, I'll probably put a couple Clecos in it, kind of get it temporarily fastened in the car, and then I'll start working on the rest of the tunnel up front. I'll get that section roughed in, and then I'll kind of figure out what I'm gonna do as far as making it one complete piece. Theoretically, theoretically, in a perfect world, we should need to shrink this panel. We shouldn't have to really stretch this panel. We should really just be able to dome this thing and it should fit pretty well. So the uh, top half of this thing needs to be, have a lot more arc to it than the bottom half. So I'm gonna try to do that as I roll this, put a lot in the top, put very little in the bottom.
well, that's good enough for now. I got everything kind of roughed in. You can kind of see, you can kind of get the idea of what I'm about to do. Um, probably gonna do some bead rolling around the edge of this thing. Maybe do like a quilted pattern on the center. Don't really know yet. Really all I wanna do right now is get these things finished out. Got a little bit of trimming to do. Um, I'll kind of temporarily fasten them in some strategic places based on where I don't think they'll stretch when I go to bead roll them. And yeah, progress. Panels. So as you can see, the rubber band on the English wheel did a very nice job up here on this panel. No shrinking, no stretching required. Some would say, you know what, you don't even need an English wheel to do that. And I guess, you know, I'm an advocate of do whatever it takes to get the job done. Don't let the equipment that you have or don't have get in your way. So yes, you could probably do that some other way. The problem is just stretching that thing over, say, uh, argon tank or something like that. You're not going to get the same contour that this one has. You have more crown on the top than you do the bottom. There's very little crown down here. There's a lot at the top. And you can only do that by creeping up on it just a little bit at a time. Now, you, not to say that it can't be done. You can stretch that thing over your knee, stretch it on this side more so than that side. But then you run into the issue of having a nice, consistent curve. And that's what you get with an English wheel. So anyway, turned out pretty nice. Pretty happy with it. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next week. Go do work, son.